Good morning, friends. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona, and I welcome you to this televised liturgy. Good morning, everyone, and a special welcome to all of those here to gather today and to those watching us on TV or the internet. We are glad that you are here and welcome you to this celebration. I'm Father Bill Coolis, and we are here at the Cathedral of the Sacred Heart in Winona. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God of our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, be with all of you. Amen. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves for the celebration, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Your people exalt forever, O God, in renewing youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now with the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, 
the God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way, and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? Why do questions arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Well, they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you that I, while I was still with you. And everything about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer 
and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Science has contributed much to the world. And it seems to be advancing more and more as time goes on. Things that were foreign 40 years ago today are commonplace and well accepted. And it has affected every part of our lives, from our food that we eat, to the shelter we have, to the things we do every day. But science has a dark side, and that is that it looks for an explanation for everything. It looks for clear proof. And it leads us to believe that that's the only way that things can be in the world. That's the only truth that can happen. And so anything that seems extraordinary or out of the way, they dismiss as some misinterpretation. Jesus in the Gospel today appears to his disciples. They were certain that he was dead, but there he stood in their midst, a live human being, and they didn't know what to think of it. But Jesus assured him with proof that he truly had risen from the dead, and that, as some had said, his body had been stolen and the apostles covered it up. He presented himself and showed that he was divine and yet human that he could eat a baked piece of fish and have it so that people would know he is there, that he was not a ghost. For us then, we don't need proof of the presence of God in our lives because we see so many signs, things that happen in this world that science can't explain. Those are the signs of God saying that he is still here in this world and that he is still proclaiming his word to us. We must be people not of unbelief, but of belief, knowing that God is here with us. Because we cannot see him, or because we do not know him personally at this point, does not mean he does not exist. He is here with us every day. He's with us in our struggles, in our trials, in our joys, and in our celebration. For that is the God that has come into the universe, the God that gives us hope, gives us meaning, and gives us life. Thus it is that even though we may look for an exact answer and find certitude, we must remember that certitude is not necessarily what God entitles us to do, for his certitude may well be different than ours. As St. Bonaventure said, the opposite of faith is not doubt, it is certainty or the demand for certainty. So may we put our faith and trust in God, knowing that in the end, he is the one that survives all. May the sciences keep advancing, but always to the honor and glory of God and never to take away from his glory. For doing so makes us leave in the human situation, which we will soon find has many things that cannot be explained. For that reason then, May we always rejoice that God is with us. All we need do is remember his power. May we not test him as he was tested on the cross when people said, come down from that cross and be one with us. He wanted to remain in his divine realm so that all of us would have faith to join in him. May we thus in this way always trust in the presence of God and the faith that we have and not rely upon facts that must conform to our own lives. For that way, we are turning against God. For God is free to do as God wills, and it does not necessarily need our approval for his things that happen in the world. May we always be mindful that even though we don't understand anything, if we remain with faith, in the end, God will prove that he was there to help us in all things. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the joy of the resurrection, we bring our prayers to our merciful Father who knows our every need. For bishops, priests, and deacons, may they be led by the Holy Spirit proclaiming the risen Christ to draw souls to God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, that all people from the ends of the earth to our own city may hear the gospel and believe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle with doubt and disbelief, that through our prayers and witness they may know the love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of this parish, may we live as an Easter people, advocating for the protection of all life, from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed brothers and sisters, may they enjoy eternal peace and happiness before the throne of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you raised Jesus from the dead to restore us to life. Please hear our prayers this day. We ask these prayers through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands with praises and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you ever more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who takes away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all and Blessed Joseph's spouse, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercies we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, by peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share now that sign of peace with each other.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Look kindly upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain to their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. A special thanks for all of us who gather together here today in this liturgy, especially those watching on TV or on the internet. We are very happy to have you with us, and we want you to know that you are very much connected to our church. We don't want you to be isolated but to remind yourself and to us that we too are joined together as brothers and sisters in you before the living presence of God. May God bless your day. May you continue to enjoy the gifts of spring and see the new hope of new life coming more and more each day. So may God bless all of you in your day and celebrate in love and enjoy with one another. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The, go in peace and glorify the Lord by your lives. Good morning. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday's televised Mass. I hope it has brought you spiritual joy and comfort this day. Our broadcast cannot continue without your support. Please consider sending a donation to TV Mass at Post Office Box 588, Winona, Minnesota, 55987.